thanks for the introduction and thanks for being here today, uh, especially because we had to move the talk uh, because of a flight delay that we had uh, arriving here in Lisbon. So thanks for uh, attending anyway. Um, so uh, today we will be talking about uh, uh, some research work that we jointly did uh, as, a, as a company, uh, as a Pluribus One and uh, uh, some colleagues uh, from University of Cagliari, SAP Laboratories, and uh, Eurecom in the context of some uh, EU-funded research projects. Um, who am I? I have, uh, I'm the co-founder and CEO of Pluribus, which is a company uh, focusing on application security. I'm also the co-chair since the beginning of this year of the uh, OWASP Italy chapter, and I would like to thank Matteo Meucci for bringing me into this uh, uh, adventure. Uh, Basically, my background is from academia. I've been doing research at the University of Cagliari for about 15 years, now involved in a a couple of uh, EU-funded projects, especially uh, the project Uptake, which is on DevSecOps, that and it's a project that I coordinate. Uh, a couple of acknowledgements uh, about the project uptake, the project S, and especially the project testable uh, that I think you may find interesting because uh, it's uh, about testing web uh, um, web application and web security uh, web security tools. So if you want to have a look at it, there are several OWAS projects that uh, were born in the context of. Uh, uh, Testable, also uh, one privacy tool presented yesterday by the colleagues from uh, Minded Security. And uh, this research work, the work that I will be presenting today, is uh, uh, mostly described in two papers. Uh, they w those that you see here. So if you want to have uh, a bit more details uh, on, uh, um, on the work, you can just uh, uh, check them and, uh, and have a look. And uh, here are all the companies and universities that have been working on, um, on the research. So uh, what, uh, what is it within this uh, presentation? I will, uh, uh, in the first part, uh, I will recall some context regarding web application firewalls and uh, uh, the core uh, rule set, just key concept, because uh, uh, I'm sure the largest part of you is uh, uh, already very um, well aware of them. Uh, just trying to recap the ideas that we need to uh, understand the second part of the talk. Uh, we have basically two original research uh, results. The, the, the first part is uh, how we can use machine learning to get better results, especially in terms of false positive reduction from uh, the rule set. So this is a a first evaluation that we did, and the second part is about uh, making uh, mod security and the rule set uh, robust against adversarial attacks. Uh, so basically, uh, attacks that are especially tailored, tailored to evade the, uh, the rule set. So I know the the, the, the title of the uh, of the talk is kind of provocatory, but again, it's. Uh, um, just a uh, David Bowie inspired title. So that's, uh, uh, just took uh, inspiration from, uh, um, from uh, a music album. So that's it. Uh, let's start from web application firewall. So you know, that's uh, the, the kind of solution that we deploy in front of uh, uh, web application and web services to stop uh, attacks that are targeting uh, the, um, the, the services or the application themselves. Uh, an easy to deploy solution. In many cases, we just need to uh, change the DNS uh, records. Of course, they cannot fix the vulnerabilities that the applications and the services contain, uh, but uh, let's say provide a very easy to take uh, solution and mitigation to, to the attacks. What's behind on uh, um, a web application firewall. So we have basically a detection component which is made of two parts, maybe three. Uh, one part, uh, one part of the detection is based on uh, a set of rules and signatures. So, for instance, the the, the rule set, um, which basically do describe 
pattern attacks. Okay, so that's, that's the idea. And in order to execute them on the traffic, what you need is an engine. So one component which is able to uh, match the rules against the, uh, the traffic and to enforce the actions that are uh, described by, uh, by the rules. And on the other side, you have uh, the, uh, the rule set itself. So the set of uh, um, expressions that describe the attacks. So there is, uh, of course, the, uh, the rule set that, that's the reference for this talk, but also um, rule sets are, are available. Modern web application firewall feature also another component, which is uh, based on uh, uh, machine learning capabilities which is more in general used to uh, detect malicious behavior. So the typical case where you can uh, use a machine learning uh, component is that of detecting bots or uh, detecting malicious behaviors, so sequences of malicious requests against the, uh, the applications. Ways of deploying web application firewalls are Let's say many, you have uh, software as a service platforms that are provided by directly by the cloud uh, providers. So there are, of course, cybersecurity vendors that are uh, providing software as a service web application firewalls. We have on-premise application and we have host-based solutions. So components that can be put on board uh, the web servers and the reverse proxy. What's uh, in a, this uh, scenario and the ecosystem, the rule set plays a fundamental role because uh, um, it's not only the rule set that is used by uh, Mod Security and uh, by Coraza, that are two of the projects that um, are maintained by the OWASP community, but it is also the basis for many, many commercial solutions. So all the big vendors, uh, cloud providers and uh, tra more traditional cybersecurity vendors are basing, basing part of the detection capabilities on the rule set. So that's the reason why we are focusing on, uh, on it during this talk. Um, so uh, the, the rule set provides a set of different rules targeting both the request and also the, um, the response. So you have the chance to detect uh, many, many uh, different kind of uh, attacks and malicious behavior, analyzing all the different parts of, sorry? No, I took it from, from the web. It was not from your presentation. Oh, so I, I took it from the web, Christian. Okay. It's from the rule set pages. It's just to, to describe the list of... Okay, so key concepts that, uh, uh, that you need to remind. The severity the anomaly scoring, and the paranoia level. So the, the severity is the score that is uh, assigned to each rule. So the kind of contribution that uh, uh, that, uh, that specific rule provides to the detection. So we have four default levels from two to five, from notice level up to critical level. The anomaly scoring is the mechanism that is used to classify the rules. So uh, the, the, the detection is uh, imp implements a collaborative detection approach. So once there is a request that is uh, uh, observed, the rules are matched against the traffic and the score is evaluated, the score, the severity score, that uh, is uh, contributed by every single rule is uh, considered, and if there is a match, is uh, added to an overall amount. If the final amount is uh, below the threshold, the request is uh, uh, allowed. If it is below the threshold, uh, above the threshold, sorry, the request is denied. So I'm not entering into detail of uh, uh, which parts of the request uh, Header, bodies, uh, resp request, and response. This uh, um, this mechanism is applied. Okay, just to, to to give you an idea. 
The third concept to remind is the concept related with the paranoia level. So the paranoia level describes the set of rules that is, uh, um, that is matched against the traffic. So paranoia level one um, provides one minimal set of rules, and the purpose is to provide minimal detection uh, with very low false positives. Paranoia level four provides the extended set of rules, so all the uh, rules possible. It's very, I would say, aggressive because uh, um, covers all the possible attack variations that are covered by the rule set. The, the side effect, as you may understand, is that uh, false positives are uh, more likely. So that's, that, that, those are the concepts that, uh, that we need. So trying to recap what, uh, what we have. So assume that uh, we have a malicious query which is input to, to, the, um, to, the, um, to the application. Once the query arrives to um, mode security, all the rules are evaluated. And so there is a severity contribution which is provided by every single rule. The contribution we get the sum of, uh, of all the possible contribution, and as I said before, the, um, the anomaly score is compared against a threshold that, of course, we have the chance to set. Just uh, um, as an overall information, this is something that uh, we see, of course, in uh, many other security products. For instance, at an historical work for the, um, let's say, for the machine learning community, has been that on uh, spam detection and uh, spam assassin, which is a solution that uh, is very well known for spam detection, implements exactly the same kind of mechanism. So we have uh, a set of rules that are matched against the emails. In, the, in that case, the contribution are weighted and uh, summed together to get an anomaly score. So that's exactly the same principle. Uh, so what do you do to Tune away false uh, positive. It's uh, written in red because it's not recommended. You could eventually directly modify the, the rule set, but what you could typically do is uh, to configure exclusions that may be runtime or uh, eventually uh, permanent uh, exclusion. And you have also the chance um, to work on single rules, on rule ranges, or using tags that are supported by the rules and define uh, kind of policies. So uh, where are the issues? So the issues that, that, that we investigated with, uh, with the work are related with uh, the set of rules that, uh, that is used, because in the process, of course, we, we need to test against the traffic, but primarily against the legitimate traffic, which is uh, received by uh, the application. And so there is a uh, a process that uh, we need to implement, uh, seeing if there are false positives that are raised by uh, the rules. And the second point uh, is related with the severity, because uh, the severity evaluation is uh, uh, provided by, uh, by uh, a priori and uh, is not related with the traffic. So the same rule may be more relevant for a specific application and less, le re less relevant for another. So we could possibly, we would have the chance to adjust that score and that severity based on the traffic features. So let's move on the machine learning part. So how can machine learning help with, um, with this? So for those of you that have uh, a minimum, uh, let's say, of, uh, uh, familiarity and expertise with uh, uh, pattern uh, analysis and machine learning. So let's assume we have a group of two patterns, okay? The most simple case, and in order to classify them, we have to build a function, a mathematical function which describes a, a surface which separates possibly perfectly, the two classes of patterns. In our case, the, the, the red one is the malicious class and the green one is the the, uh, the legitimate one. This is, of course, a very lucky case because we can perfectly separate the planes just drawing a line, okay? And uh, uh, so this means that 
if you remind uh, a little bit of functional analysis uh, to write the equation, the equation of, uh, uh, of a line. So we just need to estimate uh, these two parameters, okay, A and B, to see how the, uh, the line is positioned in the space. If you want to have a more complex representation of the patterns, just 3D, for 4D I have not the tools yet, unfortunately, uh, the problem is the same. So we are representing the, um, the patterns in a 3D uh, space, and we have not a line, but a plane. But the, the, the problem is the same. And so we need to estimate the coefficients, okay. What is nice? The nice fact is that uh, this detection mechanism actually implements a linear classification model. That's exactly the same because the severity of the rules is uh, basically the coefficients of the plane, okay? So if we are able to estimate with a, in, uh, with a systematical approach the severity of the rule, so basically if you are able to train a classifier, we are just building a linear classifier. So setting the values of the severity and, of course, in the end, the, uh, the threshold, we are building a linear classifier. One point that we can, uh, that we can work on, and we will see it with the uh, results. Uh, to build a plane and to build such a representation, we just, we need to identify the right uh, dimensions, okay? Uh, so all the possible axes according to which to represent the traffic. So what the rule set is providing here is a number of different axes according to which to represent the traffic, okay? So we are waiting the, uh, the rules to represent the traffic according to the set of axes which is provided by the rule set. So that's, uh, that's uh, the idea. Of course, the, the final threshold may be set using the, uh, using the um, let's say, the, the trade-off that we want to achieve on, uh, between uh, legitimate and uh, between detection and false positive rate. So just to give you an overall idea of the system, we have a training set, and I will provide you details later, which is uh, uh, based on both legitimate and malicious uh, traffic. We have we are using the rules as a features, so we are uh, basically uh, we have a, a sequence of zeros and ones, which is uh, uh, one when, of course, a rule set is co a rule is contributing to the detection. Zero when the rule is not contributing to uh, the detection. And there is here machine learning tuning, which is basically estimate of the severity values. So here is the data set that uh, we have been uh, using. Uh, we took a data set that has been um, made available by uh, Checkpoint with Open uh, AppSec. Prevalently, this data set includes legitimate traffic. So there is, a, a, um, let's say, just a bunch of SQL injection uh, attacks. We build a, a data set of SQL injection attacks, uh, collecting them from uh, different sources, including some samples that have been generated with uh, SQL map. Uh, one thing that I didn't say before is that the work, the evaluation is uh, focused entirely on SQL injection attacks, but as you may imagine, the model that we uh, considered is uh, um, absolutely general and can be extended to other attack categories as well. So the final uh, data set that we build is, build, is made of uh, 50,000 samples, uh, 25 uh, legitimates and 25 malicious, 80% for training and 20% uh, for testing. And uh, we did different extractions of uh, the data set. So uh, here you have the references on the mod security and core set versions that we have been using. And uh, there is one thing that is interesting is that uh, we played with different uh, classifiers, NSVN classifier, random forest, uh, and so basically some linear classifier. Uh, we also 
included uh, a regularization phase and uh, without entering into details of it, it's just uh, a further constraint that you can put while you are estimating the, the decision function that allows you to, let's say, adjust the behavior of the classifier. In uh, uh, one case, with uh, L1 regularization, you can uh, uh, reduce the number of features that you are uh, using. And uh, in uh, uh, the second case, with L2 regularization, you tend to use all the features available. So this means that you are tending to use all the possible rules in uh, the rule set. And uh, uh, the final effect for which uh, regularization is, uh, is used is to achieve uh, less dependency of the model from uh, the, the data set. So to provide the, uh, the model a better generalization capability. So, uh, let's start from uh, uh, the evaluation of uh, um, vanilla uh, mode security. So, uh, we have uh, uh, the false positives against the detection rate for different uh, layers, for different paranoia uh, levels. Of course, uh, uh, you, you see there that uh, with paranoia level one, uh, which is uh, the, mm, the level for which we use the minimal set of uh, rules, we have the possibility to, to stay with a very low false positive. So up to, um, let's say one false positives, uh, over one million of requests. Of course, if, uh, uh, increase the set of the number of rules, and so if you increase the uh, the paranoia level, the um, the false positives increase, uh, keeping the same values of uh, of detection. Um, this is a different view on uh, uh, on this because uh, um, here is the value of detection rate that we got uh, setting the value of false uh, positives. So uh, we took 1% false positives, which is a, a common threshold used in uh, um, the evaluation of uh, machine learning uh, algorithms. And uh, here are the corresponding uh, detection rates that we are, uh, that we are uh, obtaining. Okay. So we do see here, and we will see it better in the next slides, that uh, with the, the help of a classifier, not entering into detail of which classifier, we can achieve, we can maintain the, um, let's say, we can increase the detection rate, li uh, keeping fixed the, the false positives. On the other side here, we will see it better, we have the chance to increase the uh, detection rate also for uh, false positives that are lower. So in red, you have the, uh, the curves that we've seen before. So that's the performance of, uh, uh, let's say, of vanilla mode security. And uh, uh, those that you have uh, up in the corner, so for instance, also here, is the value of detection rate. So. At the same false positives, we are able to increase uh, kind of significantly the value of uh, the detection rate. Again, we didn't change anything beside the severity, um, the severity scores that have been just adjusted on the traffic. So that's the only point. All the, everything remains the same. Okay. So that's the, uh, the main input. Another interesting thing is that, uh, is how the severity values are distributed. So do not pay attention to the actual values. So uh, the weights are not the real scores from the, uh, the rule set because they have been rescaled. Um, but let's say the, uh, the green part represents the reference value which is provided by uh, rule set and the blue and uh, the red bars represent the value that has been assigned by the classifier with two different degrees of regularization. So what is interesting is that, uh, as you see, the classifier is adjusting the values. So in uh, several cases, you are not using the same values that were um, originally foreseen. Uh, and also, and of course, values may change depending on how you tune the, the learning mechanism. So we have also different picture of this and the weights may change depending on the optimization strategy which is used by the classifier. 
In some cases, we are able to set the weight to zero. So this means that uh, the, uh, the curves, so the trade-off between false positives and detection rate, is used, uh, is obtained using only a subset of the rules available. Okay, so again, the set of rules is the same. We are just playing with the severity values. Uh, in some cases, we do have uh, uh, also negative values. So this may suggest the chance to have uh, uh, an higher granularity uh, in the severity value, which is a kind of, let's say, uh, if you want, a kind of obvious uh, consideration. The second uh, result that we are bringing today is how to, uh, let's say, take a, a step further and make the work uh, robust against adversarial attacks. So, you know, the, the context where uh, web application firewall work is adversarial by definition, because everybody here is kind of trying to evade web application firewalls. So what we do is to manipulate rules to find attack instances that are not detected by, uh, by the rules. So that's something obvious. And so the idea is to take into account this since the learning phase. So um, you see that we have added there a component which is uh, uh, adversarial SQL injection. So we are considering since the training phase some uh, attack instances that are actually manipulation of the uh, SQL injection attacks that are trying to evade the, uh, the detection uh, engine. And of course, the reason for this is to shape that, uh, that function taking since the training phase into account the fact that maybe adversarial uh, prone to, uh, to, to evade the uh, web application file. So uh, the tool that uh, we have been using to generate the, uh, the possible uh, mutation is uh, Wafamole, which is a, um, which is a, a tool that allows to um, manipulate SQL injection uh, attacks. It's a, a project maintained by um, Luca and Andrea, with, that are two of the colleagues that have been participating in uh, this work. Just for you to have the, it as a reference, is a set of the possible manipulations that uh, um, Wafamole allows you to implement and that we have been using to generate the attack uh, instances. So uh, here is a picture of the data set. The, the, um, the setting for this work is uh, uh, different from, uh, from uh, the, the previous one. Uh, the data set is uh, different. Uh, the sep samples are different, but everything is uh, fully documented. You have also the references here. So if you want to, um, to play uh, on your own, uh, we will be absolutely um, helped with it. So uh, since the purpose of this work was to increase uh, robustness, uh, I will be focusing here not on the detection part, but instead on uh, the robustness part, which means that uh, you have here in uh, plain orange and plain blue here, the two lines that are on top of the picture, uh, two different configurations of the classifier that implements the same approach that we uh, described uh, before. Um, this one, the blue in particular, is also taking into account the possibility that attackers are playing against the WAF, creating manipulation of the attack instances. Uh, the orange approach is not considering this. Okay, so we are not making any assumption and we are not including any adversarial sample in uh, the training. The dotted lines represent the performance where adversarial samples are sent against the, uh, the system and the classifier. And so, of course, we do expect a drop in performances, and that's, uh, that, that was the original idea. And uh, uh, the nice thing is that if you include adversarial training, so if you include samples, uh, adversarial samples in the training set and you shape the model in order to uh, include them, 
you are getting an advantage in terms of uh, robustness. So uh, it's not only important to ensure, let's say, a, a peak performance in terms of uh, robustness, in terms of, uh, sorry, uh, trade-off between detection and false positives, but also to think, to think in terms of robustness. So how much robust is the system against uh, manipulation? And so this implementation, the, the blue implementation, is exactly taking into account this particular point. Okay. Yes, please. Oh, yeah. So just do different classifiers. So the, it, it doesn't matter the, the, the specific classifier that we have been uh, using. So just to show that uh, also considering two different classifiers, you in general get the same behavior. So the, the case where um, the model which is trained against adversarial attack is generally more robust than uh, uh, than the other. The baseline performance may be different, and I will say may be different also for the SVM if we change the configuration parameters. It's just to, let's say, provide you two different examples of it. Okay? Good. <laughs> okay, so uh, just uh, to conclude, uh, we are showing here two different ways to integrate uh, machine learning in uh, the work that is done uh, via uh, the rule set, mode security, but I would say more in general all the um, web application uh, firewalls that are uh, implementing a similar uh, mechanism. Uh, one part of the work was focused on uh, adjusting the severity of, uh, of the rules and in order to let's say, help finding a better trade-off between false positives and uh, detection. The second part uh, is uh, focused on uh, uh, robustness. So this means uh, that uh, we are trying to ensure that uh, those performances are guaranteed even when there is one person which is uh, deliberately trying to evade the, the web application firewall. Uh, we are sharing the, the code uh, for the, the first part of uh, the, the evaluation. Um, so that's, uh, that's almost it. And so thanks for your attention. And if, if there is any question, I will be really glad to take them. Do, do we have any questions from the audience? Uh, I see. I quickly saw the repo and did you test only using PyMod security or did you test in a real server with real traffic also? Oh. And what are the results with that? Oh, yeah. So uh, I would say the data set that, uh, that we used, the legitimate traffic, was collected from real servers. So that's that's real traffic that we are collecting. Um, it's sorry, I, I said if you put it in production with real traffic afterwards to uh, have a real. Yeah, I mean, we exactly simulated that kind of scenario because the the traffic that we that, that we used was a uh, um, real one. Uh, we instrumented mod security using Pi mod security, and so that's. Uh, that, 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 awesome. That's the environment that we have. My follow-up will be, um, what about, because you said that you can replicate this for other kinds of attacks. Can you with the same models? Yeah, in terms of models, it's the same. So the, the reason why we focus on SQL injection is that there was, a um, let's say, a larger availability of tools for generating the attack instances. So that, that, that was the, the idea, and especially for Wafamole for the uh, adversarial manipulation. So in, the, in that case, it was kind of easy and was easy to test. But uh, uh, the approach that I described in terms of optimization works exactly, uh, exactly in the same way also for all the, uh, the attacks. So we, we didn't make... Uh, so if you remember when I explained the model, my, my only assumption was on the weights, so how to shape the function. And uh, there was not actually any, um, let's say, uh, any assumption on the fact that we were detecting SQL injection attempts. But any other questions?
Uh, thanks for a good presentation. I think you summed up your research really nicely. I particularly liked uh, the way you explained the classifiers, I think. Okay. That representation is really cool. Uh, I think I understood more than I did before about my own work. <laughs> that was cool. Uh, what is difficult for me is that you're using a lot of terms that have a meaning in the mod security world, but I think you use them differently. What do you mean by severity exactly? Uh, and then follow up. Uh, what is problematic for us as an OWAS project is that you had public funding for your research that you carried out, you have results, but none of your results was fed back into making a public project better. I mean, reclassifying a rules across the paranoia labs would be very useful and would have been useful before the 4 zero release in February you published last autumn. And... And now we probably have to try to reproduce it or you give it to us at last. And it's all very late. And, e and I'm not even sure we can make use of it. So this is really hard. But what is your meaning of severity first? Oh, okay. So, uh, uh, Christian, for this, thanks for the question first. And so for the severity, we just mean uh, the weight which is assigned to every rule. So, uh, so. Since we have a, basically what we are implemented with the rule set is a collaborative detection approach. So, uh, every rule is saying to mode security, let's say, okay, this is a particularly relevant, this attack, this, uh, uh, sorry, this uh, request is particularly relevant to me, this is less relevant. Just based on the score which is included in, uh, uh, with the rule. For those that we have selected, yes. So, so you remove the score and added a new score? Yeah, we adjusted the value of the score, exactly. Oh, okay. Yeah, so yeah. Call yeah, exactly. Okay. Yeah, okay. yeah. Okay. Yeah, so starting from the, uh, that's the point. We changed the, the, the value of the scores that was original yeah, assigned. Cool. Okay. Cool, okay. That's, uh, and, one thing, uh, probably I didn't men mention it explicitly. Integrating the adversarial part, so the second part of the work, may be uh, kind of harder because uh, we should find a way to integrate with, uh, with, uh, uh, with most security as well. But, uh, Christian, for the point that you mentioned, estimating the weights, uh, adjusting the weights on the traffic, uh, Maybe something that we can find a way to work on and to bring into the project because it's something that you can do on the traffic as uh, uh, it was requested. And so if we can kind of engineer that part, provide people one tool to adjust the weights of the score based on the real attack instances. Yeah. So that's, uh, that will be, I think, really, really doable because uh, in the end, uh, you're just implementing a linear classifier. So if you can just put the weights of that classifier on the rule set, the job is done. Okay? Yeah. Well, any other questions? Well, okay, I can just put one, uh, a bit following Christian and uh, a bit on what you were saying. How would you, yeah, sorry. No, no, okay. Uh, so how would you integrate this finally into uh, mod security and the passion mod security? Yeah. So, uh, again, the, the integration of the classifier, uh, of the classifier, so fully integrating a classifier, so a complex model, uh, which is uh, something that you will need in case of a nonlinear classifier that will require a development activities on mod security, Coraza, or whatever project you would like to consider to apply the, uh, the, the rule set on. The other part is, uh, I will say, it's kind of easy, and uh, I think uh, we, we didn't have time to engineering it so far, but uh, probably we can uh, provide a kind of evaluation procedure. If you go here, uh, to the link that is provided in this slide. There is already some data sets and uh, some piece of uh, uh, source code that you can uh, uh, use to reproduce the evaluations that we did. So we are sharing everything. So um, if you are able to, if you are able to provide people a way to run the same kind of experiment or test on their data set, they will just need to take the, the severity values or the, the scores that are assigned to the rules and apply them on the configuration. So the 
integration will be kind of straightforward. Oh, thank you. Uh, any further questions? Okay, well then, thank you very much for the yeah, great presentation. You.